क्लिक द बेल आइकन टू गेट लेटेस्ट वीडियोज फ्रॉम ई कीडा हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू दिस वीडियो वी आर एट द कॉन्क्लूजन स्टेज ऑफ द चैप्टर माइक्रोवेव ट्रांसमिशन लाइन्स where we have started with the first topic to understand a circuit model involving the lumped elements r l g and c with respect to the unit length for the derivation of the transmission line equations into the voltage and current form we have used the distributed circuit theory the distributed network theory you can say we proceeded further to know the reflection coefficient formulated the transmission coefficient also the knowledge of standing wave we have taken when there it is imperfect matching between the characteristic impedance and the load impedance the measurement in the terms of standing wave ratio we have seen we further derived the line impedance the line admittances and we have been also introduced to the very popular method graphical type that it is use of smith chart to find the solutions for transmission line problems so in the selected previous videos we have also solved certain problems making the use of smith chart we are now also familiar with the method of single stub matching so to get the lacunas associated with the single stub matching improved or removed there the lacunas to be removed of course we go for the next topic that it is the double stub matching so let us see the details so here we start with our topic double stub matching so as the previous case matching refers to the impedance matching so the impedance matching should be from the characteristic impedance of the transmission line to the load impedance applied to that of so now as we know single stub matching the single stub matching when we are dealing with it is sometimes impractical as just now in the previous video we have solved a simple problem with the help of single stub matching it was quite tedious to find out the exact location of the stub into the smith chart so determining the exact physical location of the stub with the help of single stub matching is quite tedious hence the method is impractical and we get the requirement of one more stub added to it that is why the method will be shifted to the double stub matching form here so now when we have the double stub matching so the devices will be consisted of the two short circuited stubs here and this will be of equal and fixed length we can say here so now usually the length of these two stubs will be of either 1/8 or 3/8 or 5/8 of the wavelength represented by lambda here now when we have the stub connected it should be possibly nearest to that of the load here so from the load end taking the d value we need to be making the double stub type of the matching here so here we can also get the use of normalized admittances and the use of unity circles either into the resistance unity circle or the conductance unity circle we can be making the use with the help of the smith chart so here the double stub matching can be better explained with the help of one schematic diagram a model we can see here so in this diagram as before we have the left hand side shown with the help of generator section the supplied potential represented v sub g with the knowledge of the generator impedance represented z sub g here now from these two points there it is the microwave transmission line in general and after these two points we have a load section the load section is represented with the load impedance zl 
So for example, we can be having the characteristic impedance of the microwave transmission line between the generator and the load representing the pure resistive type hence R sub x0 is equal to 50 ohms here. So now the load impedance is selected to be 100 plus GA times 100 here. So now these are the two stubs here. So this is a pair of points here and this is another pair of points on the length of microwave transmission line here. So let us denote this is the pair for 1 dash 1 that we used to have for the single stub line. So it used to have the length like this. Let us say this time it is L suffix 1. Now for the single stub we had the representation of the normalized admittance that it is y suffix 1 1. We had resolved it in terms of y s and y d that time. Let us designate the suffixes 1 1 to them. So y s 1 and y d 1 will be the two resolved components corresponding to the length of transmission line and the length of stub here. So in the similar fashion we add one more stub with the same length here. So we denote it L2 but L1 is equal to L2 here. Now the position of the second stub we have represented by the points 2 dash 2 here and the corresponding normalized admittance at the point y22 can be denoted by y suffix 2 to resolve into the direction of stub. So it will be y suffix s2 and here the direction of the transmission line can be y suffix d2 represented here. So now the positions with respect to the length of transmission line from the load end for example for the first one that we have 0 0.40 times lambda the wavelength here and for the second step we have 3 by 8. So we have already discussed 3 eighths of the lambda we can take here. So we hope that with the help of one more step added with the fixed length and the step lines that are exactly parallel to each other we can be able to better find the physical location onto the transmission line and obtain the desired parameters for the microwave transmission line under consideration. So by the next lecture we shall be having a practice of simple problem based on to this double stub matching with the help of Smith chart and I hope we shall be concluding this particular chapter by addressing certain connectors here. So I hope you are definitely getting the knowledge of microwave engineering we share with good benefits here. So for more information and the details, you can subscribe to eKeda channel. Thank you.